Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and can you guess what I'm caking this week? Is this something that you step on and then turn to it? It's Lego! I'm caking giant Lego bricks for my son's fifth birthday. To make this cake, I baked 13 pounds of my ultimate chocolate batter in one rectangular and one square pan. I leveled my cakes once they were completely cooled and chilled. I'm going to layer both of them into two layers. Now that my cakes are layered, I'm going to cut each cake into individual, or what will become individual Lego bricks. After doing this, I realized I wish I had cut the sizes first and then layered the cakes, but everything's okay. One of my pans was 11 by 15 inches, and from this pan, I'm going to get three Lego bricks. One brick will be 15 by five, one brick will be 10 by five, and one brick will be five by five. Does that make sense? From my square cake that is 10 by 10 inches, I will cut one brick that is 10 by five and two bricks that are five by five. There's gonna be a lot of numbers in this video. Now I have six cakes that will become six Lego bricks. Five for my son because he's turning five and one that I can cut and share with you guys. Well, not actually, I'll just eat it in front of you. <laughs> The next thing I need to do is place each one of these cakes onto a cake board that is cut to the exact size, and then I need to simple syrup all my layers. I told Sir Squeeze he better simple syrup accurately because this is for my son. While the simple syrup soaks in, I am going to mix together a special filling for this cake. I'm mixing score toffee bits into my chocolate Swiss meringue butter. Whoa. It's like a chocolate bar. You should smell it, really. Coffee bits. Toffee bits. Toffee Not, bits. I, my son doesn't need coffee. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no coffee needed. <laughs> it's time to fill my Lego brick cakes. So there's a chocolate layer on the bottom. Then I spread some Italian meringue buttercream evenly. We gotta keep these looking like bricks. Then I lay on Kit Kats. I chose Kit Kats because they're the straightest, most level chocolate bar. You know what I'm saying? They're not bumpy on the top, they're flat. <laughs> and if I need to cut them to fit, they're easy to cut. So I lay a layer of Kit Kats on the cake. Then I spread a layer of my toffee chocolate buttercream. I had to close my eyes when I said that because I can smell it when I talk about it. And then I add the top cake layer. Coffee chocolate butter cream would toffee. be really good. Oh, it would, just not for a five-year-old. I actually love coffee and toffee. There's a Ben & Jerry's ice cream that is coffee toffee crunch. It's coffee ice cream. I realize, you know what I realize? I talk to you a lot. Like, I'll see in the video that I'm like, so Orhan, <laughs> like, never mind them. You know what I love, Orhan? Um, my favorite time of the year is here now. Camp cake is back. Well, it's almost back. Mark your calendars because this live stream baking event is happening December 15th. From now until November 12th at midnight EST, you can enter to win my mega prize pack. This prize has a retail value of over $500 and it includes a signed copy of my cake book, some of my most popular caking bundles, cake wear, and of course, camp cake. Just click the link below for your chance to win. We'll be picking the winners live on Instagram. Plus, I'll be doing additional giveaways during that live stream, but you have to be there to win. The next thing I want to do is chill these cakes because I need to make sure that they're level after I've filled them before I start crumb coating. I'm gonna use a ruler and I'm going to level them all to three inches tall. Wow, that rhymed. If I said that, you would say no, that. They that don't rhyme. all and tall rhyme. Just because they have the same three letters at the end. No, but that's what. Oh, Cody, we're having the rhyming conversation again. Oh my goodness. He, now he needs me to prove to him why all and tall rhyme. Yours was both, both and both. Yeah, and they rhyme both. Almost as much as all and tall. No, I'm not even joking. I think they rhyme. I'm not sure how to progress this conversation. Me neither, I, I, I give up. I honestly, I need a white flag. <laughs> because you guys have been complaining every single week about my beautiful pink crumb coat and chill megaphone, 
Jocelyn actually removed it from this kitchen. Yeah. But when I was at her house, I took it back. <laughs> I'm like 007. The only way I'd be willing to part with this megaphone is if I can auto-tune the crumb coat and shell. Right. I want to like T-Pain crumb coat and shell. Man, she really don't deserve me. Time to crumb coat and chill. Now that my crumb coat is chilled, I'm going to ice my cakes again. Oh, so what I'm going to do is, well, I'm just gonna attempt to ice these cakes. I use a spatula. I also use a bench scraper to help me keep my edges nice and square. But as I always recommend with square cakes, I'll probably ice this one more time. Actually, I will ice this one. I've iced all six cakes and chilled them, but now I'm going to go back and perfect that icing even more. <laughs> so what I did is I measured the cakes and I cut more cake boards to the exact size. Now what I'm gonna do is place that cake board on top of the cake and then use a spatula and my bench scraper to just ice the sides. This way I know it's really straight because I'm like, like there's two boards and I'm lining my spatula up with them. If you know a mom who works tirelessly in her kitchen, making a cake for her child, only to have her child say, I didn't want that, share this video. He was happy this year. Yeah? Yep. So you didn't ask for Lloyd? Nope, but I will tell you what he did at the end. It's time to roll out a whole lot of fun. I roll the fondant nice and thin to about an eighth of an inch, and I need to make sure to roll enough of each color to cover all four sides and the top of one brick. Six bricks, six different colors. So keep in mind your measurements when you're rolling the colors and know which brick you wanna cover in each color. I love how I tell you guys this as if there's someone out there who's like, you know what I'm gonna do this weekend? Make six Lego bricks. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Like, just just make one. You yeah. know what I mean? Make one, make it bigger, it'll be great. To begin covering these cakes, the first thing I do is measure the height of the cakes. We're gonna get into a lot of measuring. And then I cut strips of that color of fondant to that exact dimension. So if it was three inches high, I cut three inch strips of fondant. Now I apply two of those strips to either side of the cake and smooth them on with a fondant smoother. I do this to all of my cakes, each one being a different color. The height is the most important, and then make sure it's a bit longer than your cake. Or wider. Wider. So confusing. So now all six of my cakes have two sides covered. Chill the cakes before we trim. Then I hold up a ruler and carefully cut down. I do this on all four sides on all six cakes. Now I can begin covering the back and front of the cakes. This week on How to Cake It Step by Step, Megan has made fall outfits out of sugar cookies. Also, Cassie is back with another fun cake for you guys. It's an elephant taking a bubble bath. Wasn't Cassie back last week? Well, apparently she wasn't. And what was last week? Last week was Jyoti's fancy cake slices. You can see them all here. Jocelyn says sometimes you let me point in the wrong direction. Yeah, you are pointing in the wrong direction. Well, hello. <laughs> Direct my direction. Here? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Really? Yeah, please. What? No. Got it, got it. Now all four sides of all of our cakes are covered and we need to address the top of the cake. So the reason I've cut all four panels on the side to the same height is because now, if our cakes were crooked at all, we can address it. So if the cake dips down under and you have sort of a lip of fondant, what we're gonna do is fill in the top of the cake with more buttercream. If you measured each side and cut the panels, if your cake was crooked, you'd just end up with a crooked Lego brick. Which I probably would. Well, now you know. So all of my cakes needed a bit of filling in, except one. It actually was a little too high at parts so I had to trim it. Now it's time to cut the fondant to place on top of each one of my cakes. First I cut one side straight with a ruler and a knife. Then I line up my set square with the straight side that I cut and cut the perpendicular side straight as well. Now always make sure that your slab is still a bit larger than your cake because we want a bit of excess to trim. And then carefully pick it up and line up 
those two straight edges with two perpendicular sides of your cake. I really hope you're with me. Now what I need to do is trim the other two sides of fondant, again with a sharp paring knife and a ruler to help. And you just wanna cut flush against the sides. Nice ruler, by the way. Thank you so much. It's like you designed it. It is. It's a lot like Connie and I designed it, isn't it? Yeah. The color, it says how to cake it. <laughs> Are we selling them? No, because there's only two right now and they're mine. <laughs> okay, perfect. They're mine. Now what I need to do is create a fondant paste to patch any seams. We won't be able to completely cover the seams, but in my opinion, I'd rather see straight, sharp sides on a Lego brick than have draped the fondant over and smoothed it because I don't have time for rounded sides on a Lego brick. Yeah, they're, they're extremely rounded. square. I turn into the seam hider and I use my fondant paste to patch up any really visible seams. I have to make a lot of fondant paste. I have to make six different colors of fondant paste. <laughs> You may have noticed that I still have extra fondant rolled out and that's a good thing because I need to make the round pegs that are on the top of Lego bricks. That's what makes Lego stick together. Because I rolled my fondant out quite thin, I need it to be a bit thicker to resemble the fondant pegs. To glue it together, I am brushing on a thin layer of water. This just starts to dissolve the sugar and makes it sticky and it will glue fondant to fondant. Now I'm going to use a circle cutter to cut out my pegs. I have to, again, I'm doing all this math in my head. I know you can't see it, but I'm super confused. And I have to make sure to cut out enough pegs that will remain visible even after I stack the cakes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I sustained a, an injury this episode while making this cake for my son. It's a finger caught. That's what's on my finger. I need to try and cut out four circular pegs in each color for the configuration that I'm thinking of Placing putting up. together. Yeah, later. Did you plan the configuration? In my head, I thought about how I wanted the bricks to be configured. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, this, this is, fun for you. this <laughs> is vital in cake decorating because it's, it's not a solid object. So you, no matter how much you measure and how much practice I have, it, it rarely works out exactly the way you thought it was going to when it comes to things like this. I've cut all of my circular pegs. I'm just gonna lay them on a board and put them in the fridge to chill because I don't wanna add them to my cakes until it's been assembled. I'm stacking my Lego brick cakes onto a large wooden cake board that I had cut and I previously covered with green fondant. Now, keep in mind that if I want this board to look like a peg board, I also have to cut a bunch of green pegs to add to this board later. So I cut a whole bunch. The first one I put down is the largest red brick. I spread a little bit of royal icing and lay down that brick. Next week, I'm making a cake for my American friends who are celebrating Thanksgiving. It's gonna be a slice. <laughs> See what I did there? If you have a guess, comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the notification bell so you know when that video is live. Now I place my blue brick perpendicular to the red one. I place my yellow one on top. Um, now before I stack the orange and purple together, I do place the pegs on those cakes. Again, use a ruler, make sure they're evenly spaced from the sides and from each other, and use a little bit of clear piping gel to glue them onto the surface of the cake. For any cake that's going to have another cake on top of it, I use dowels inserted inside to support it. Now it's very important that the yellow, so the primary bricks, the yellow, blue, and red, I dowel them and stack them before adding the pegs because I want it to look like these Legos were fit perfectly together. With my orange and purple, I add the pigs first, then dowel, because they're off to the side and they're not, you know, they're not stuck to each other. Could you not pick something that he likes that's easy? He doesn't like anything easy. <laughs> he is obsessed with Lego and Ninjago. I'm, I'm gonna try and get him into like, I don't know, 
bouncy balls for next year. Yeah. Look at this bouncy ball. It's so bouncy. And then next year I'll just make a round cake. <laughs> Perfect. I have to acknowledge that my son is turning five. So I rolled out some white, black, and yellow fondant because I wanted to cut a five out and make it look like the Lego logo. So there's this YouTube channel, it's called Ryan's Toy Review. And Ryan has these ginormous Lego bricks in the background while he's playing with his mother. And my son is obsessed. First of all, he always asks me why I don't introduce him to Ryan, because I don't know Ryan. And then he asks me, where, why don't I buy him those ginormous Lego bricks? So I caked him the ginormous Lego bricks. And before I served it to him, I added a number five candle. He loved it. But then he proceeded to take the number five candle and repeatedly stab the Lego bricks. <laughs> Did you make this, Mom? Oh, I love it! Uh, I said, I didn't, it didn't take me days to make you that. Go ahead. Go, my brain doesn't hurt from all that math. Just go right ahead. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out Megan's fall outfit cookies and Cassie's elephant taking a bubble bath. I'll see you next week.